Okay. Uh, everybody sound is good? Yes? Yes? Okay. Thank you all very much for joining us again today. Um, today, Mayor Price is going to give an initial statements, uh, followed by Chief Krause, who will give an update on the investigation. And David Cook will have a brief statement after that. If y'all would hold your questions until the end, uh, then we will be able to take some questions of any of the three that you'd like to ask questions to. Uh, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and introduce Mayor Price. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Um, we wanted to take this opportunity <clears throat> to talk a little bit about Saturday night, Saturday morning, what happened, and Mrs. Jefferson's death. But before Chief and City Manager speak, I wanted to say a few things to my city. We are all heartbroken today. Atiana was a beautiful, smart, amazing young woman, by all accounts, who was unjustly taken from her family. The entire city is in pain. As a mother, a grandmother, a sister, an aunt, I can't imagine anything worse, and I'm so sorry. On behalf of the entire city of Fort Worth, I'm sorry. To Atiana's family, it's unacceptable. There is nothing that could justify what happened on Saturday morning. Nothing. To Mr. James Smith, I know you're hurting today as well. You called police as we ask good neighbors to do. You were being that wonderful neighbor, the one that we all want next door to us, the type of person who does what's right in Fort Worth. Atiana's death has left you totally shaken and your sense of security and trust in law enforcement jeopardized. And I'm sorry. To Atiano's nephew, who witnessed the unspeakable loss, sorry doesn't cut it. The entire city needs to surround this young man with prayer, support, and anything that his family needs. Lastly, the images released showing the gun inside Miss Jefferson's home. The gun is irrelevant. She was in her own home, caring for an eight-year-old nephew. Atiana was a victim. She was taken from her family in circumstances that are truly unthinkable. I'm listening and hearing our community, my home. There's heartbreak, but healing and renewal of trust will come. It'll take a significant amount of work from all of us and it must be done day by day, a step at a time, action by action, and it won't stop until we have justice and closure for Atiana's family, to rebuild a sense of trust for the community and with our police department. Mere words are not enough. We are taking immediate action. You will hear from the chief and city manager in a few moments, city leadership has set in place motions to bring a third-party panel of national experts to review this department. City Manager Cook will have more specifics for you in a minute. I would say, act justly, love mercy, walk humbly. Those words from scriptures are short and poignant on a day like today. Our community is mourning and hurting. Everyone expects justice, no matter how you define justice. This council, this city, and this police department will live humbly and provide the justice. Justice is critical here. We know we cannot bring back this young woman who was taken all too soon. But this is a pivotal moment for a city that will and can come together and we will take actions swiftly and with transparency. Thank you all for caring. Let's wrap this family in love and prayers. Chief Krause. Thank you, Mayor. Before I provide an update, I'd first like to extend my sincerest of sympathies to the family of Tatiana Jefferson. Her father called this shooting senseless and I certainly have not been able to make sense of why she had to lose her life. On behalf of the men and women of the Fort Worth Police Department, I'm so sorry for what occurred. 
You, Tatiana's family and friends, have my apologies, my condolences, and my prayers. We've received many calls from the community expressing their concerns and demands. And I assure you, as chief of this department, I share those concerns and I demand a thorough, transparent, and speedy investigation. This will not be an opportunity for us to make excuses, but rather to investigate this case to the fullest to provide the justice we all seek for Tatiana. Our officer-involved shootings are investigated by both our major case unit, which investigates the criminal aspect of the case, and our internal affairs unit, which investigates administrative policy and training violations. These investigations concur or occur concurrently, but separately. I will outline where we are with both, both investigations at this point. The Internal Affairs Unit responded to the scene of the shooting. Their role is to observe the on-scene investigation, but they take a back seat to the criminal investigation being conducted by the Major Case Unit. The officer who shot at Tatiana was served his written administrative complaint on Sunday. At that time, he was also placed on detached duty and stripped of his badge and firearm. My intent was to meet with him today to terminate his employment with the Fort Worth Police Department. However, the officer tendered his resignation this morning before we met. Even though he no longer works for the city, we will continue the administrative investigation as if he did. The case will be completed and reviewed by the chain of command. Had the officer not resigned, I would have fired him for violations of several policies, including our use of force policy, our de-escalation policy, and unprofessional conduct. A statement to that effect will be placed within the investigation to serve as a written record of that determination. Additionally, the separation paperwork that is sent to the state licensing agency, the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, will reflect that he was dishonorably discharged from employment with the Fort Worth Police Department. Now that the officer has resigned, he's no longer, he no longer has the protections of state civil service law. Therefore, I can now release his name. Aaron Dean, ID 4598, was the officer who responded to the call and fired the shot that killed Tatiana. He was hired by the department on August 21st, 2017 and commissioned as a licensed peace officer on April 13th, 2018. Despite his resignation, the officer still faces criminal charges from the major case investigation. I personally checked on the progress of that case repeatedly and I anticipate a substantial update to provide you no later than tomorrow. Additionally, we have also presented a preliminary case to the FBI to review the officer's actions for possible civil rights violations. None of this information can ease the pain of Tatiana's family, but I hope it shows the community that we take these incidents seriously. We will continue to pro provide updates as they become available. Thank you. As stated by both Mayor Price and Chief Kraus, my thoughts and prayers go out to Ms. Jefferson's family. That Tanya's death should not have happened. And on behalf of the city of Fort Worth, I am truly sorry. The community has called for independent review of the police department. I would like to take a minute to provide an update on our process to bring on an independent police monitor. And that was a recommendation by the Race and Culture Task Force and approved by the City Council through the City's recently adopted budget. We are on track to having candidates for the position in Fort Worth for interviews in November. As part of the process, we were working on having a third-party group of national experts come in to review current police policies and training practices to ensure best practices are in place as the monitor begins his or her work. The city manager's office will take the lead in this effort, and of course, it will include the participation of the police department. Currently, we are reaching out to experts in the field, and once we finalize our plan and recommendation, we'll be presenting that to the city council in the next few weeks. Thank you. Questions? Chief, the, the victim's family here is asking for an outside agency to come in 
and actually investigate the shooting, not just the policies within this police department. Will that happen? And if it's not, what happened? Why? I have reached out to the uh, Texas Rangers, and we discussed that. However, at this point, they have not committed to, to anything. Um, bringing them in this late after the uh, investigation started is not ideal for them. Um, we have also, like I said, uh, submitted this for review to the FBI for them to look for civil rights violations. Chief, when is it ever protocol to shoot into a, a dwelling that's possibly occupied, now knowing that an eight-year-old is inside from your law enforcement experience? When is that ever okay? I would say it, it, the only time that would be okay is if you knew that was the only person in there and they were actively firing upon you at the time. Chief, why were those photographs of the gun released? As we've been releasing video and trying to do it quicker, that is something we've done in the past is to, to include the photograph of the firearm to show what the perceived threat may have been. It, in hindsight, it was, 20, it, was a, it was a bad thing to do. Um, I think it was to show that there was a weapon involved. Um, however, we're homeowners in the state of Texas. I, I can't imagine... Uh, most of us, if we thought we had somebody outside our house they shouldn't be and we had access to a firearm, that we wouldn't act very similarly to how she acted. Chief, was she holding the weapon? I, I don't have that information to comment. Do we have any idea where the weapon was located in the home at the time of the shooting? It, it was located just inside the window. So with that being said, you are very sympathetic to the, <coughs> to the problems, problematic nature of showing that. I so, am. So what was the instinct that made that occur? And, and what is there going to be any disciplinary action to those who, again, demonize another, per, another victim? I don't know we'll do disciplinary action on that, but definitely we need to review what we did, why we did that, and, and when it's appropriate and when it's not appropriate. Will criminal charges be filed against the officer? I will have an update for you tomorrow on the criminal investigation. Chief, break down, um, a lot of people have been saying welfare check because Mr. Smith was concerned for his neighbor and called him I know that the response call was to an open structure. Can you say what the protocol is when officers are responding to an open structure call from a non-emergency number? Okay. The officers do not know if that Kate, if that call came in through 911 or non-emergency. They both go to the same dispatcher. Um, an open structure call is something that you would typically park down the street and approach cautiously. A uh, welfare check is something that doesn't require quite a heightened response. And so from Mr. Smith's call, it was not taken as a welfare call? That appears to be accurate. Do you know if the officer showed up just in a regular patrol car? Was he part of a different type of unit? No, his patrol. Did the officers fire from within the fenced-off backyard? And no, so did they knock on the door, front door first? There's no indication they knocked on the front door, and yes, they did fire from the backyard. Would you expect him to knock on the door or ring the doorbell, acknowledging their presence there in some form? If, if they were doing a welfare check, yes. If they thought they had something more uh, criminal, then a more tactical response would be warranted. I know that uh, Aaron Dean was only with the department for a very short period of time, but during that time, was he disciplined for anything else prior to this incident? I believe there was an accident on his record and nothing else. What does that mean? What does that mean, Chief? What does that mean, accident? A traffic accident. Oh. Chief, the other officer that responded to the initial call, um, is there any action being taken with that officer? No, she is, she is being treated as a witness officer. Can you, you mention the spelling, the spelling of Aaron Dean? A-A-R-O-N-D-E-A-N. Hmm? -A -A she's really Again, it depends on, on the uh, mindset of the officer, what type of call they think they're responding to. You mentioned bringing in a third party to look at your overall policies and procedures. Is there any thinking that you may need to do something sooner to go over training or policies with the staff you have in place right now? Absolutely. Each of these incidents causes us to reflect upon that. So in what way might that happen? Right? So We've, all, we've already had our use of force coordinator look out at other agencies, what they're doing, their training and their policies, and compare ours to there and see where we need to improve. Additionally, uh, we are uh, 
an accredited uh, Texas Police Chiefs Association agency, and so they review policies annually as well. Chief, um, this officer, how old is he, and had he been previously with any other police department? I do not have that uh, information on his age. I do not believe he has been with another agency. And Chief, what can you tell us, what can you tell members of the community who have told us incidents like this are why they do not trust with police, what do you tell them in the future? Because they still have to live here. I tell them I get it. I nobody looked at that video and said there's any doubt that this officer acted inappropriately. It, I get it. We're, we're trying to train our officers better. We're trying to shore up our policies, and we're trying to ensure that they act and react the way that the citizens intend them to. That they act and react with a servant's heart instead of a warrior's heart. There are times for officers to act as warriors and defenders, and there are times for them to act as public servants and humble servants. A number of community members last night at the vigil raised the number of shootings that have happened, officer-involved shootings in, in Fort Worth in the year. Is there a problem? Has something changed? Is there, a, a, I guess, a difference in, in responses now than there used to be that has prompted that? No, there's not, and I believe we have had less officer-involved shootings this year than we did last year. Um, we did have several in a short period of time, I believe six uh, fatal ones uh, since June 1st. Has the officer been cooperative in, in interviews? And Which officer? The officer in the, the shooting. No. Is, is, he's not been cooperative? No. What do you is he supposed to be cooperative by touch word? He resigned before his opportunity to cooperate. So he hasn't taken any questions from you that as is, of this moment? That is correct. What is Does that play into his firing at all? Does that play into his firing at all? Or? I, would, I wouldn't say that's why he was fired. I mean, what's, well, what's the protocol then, sir? How, how soon after a shooting is the officer usually either having to, to speak with you guys about what he says happened and his perceived threat in this case? Okay. Like I said, I, we served him as administrative, uh, written administrative warning Sunday. Once that is served by state, state civil service law, he has 48 hours to offer a statement. Or we cannot, uh, in, uh, we cannot question him for 48 hours after that point. What are you telling your officers, uh, your other officers who are out on the street today, what are you telling them? Most of the officers I've encountered over the past couple of days are telling me, Chief, this isn't how we operate. They understand the gravity of the situation. They understand how this has eroded the public trust in them. Chief, knowing that he hasn't been cooperative, um, in, in cases similar to this, there have been instances where it takes so long for the officer's name to become public, that that essentially gives them time to wipe social media, to wipe any, anything like that clean. Has step, have steps been taken to preserve all of that in this particular officer's case? As we saw in the Amber Geiger case, that ended up being a significant portion, issue in, in her trial. Um, have steps been taken to preserve this officer's social media accounts and anything like that? I don't have that information. Can I ask uh, the mayor, please, ma'am? Sure. Just because this is what we're talking about today, uh, Ms. Price. Uh, since the shooting, former police chief Fitzgerald has said, and his supporters really have said that uh, they're renewing their calls for his reinstatement, suggesting that perhaps the number of police shootings would not be as high if he were still on the job, and they're asking for him to come back. What's your response to that, ma'am? I'm not going to comment on former Chief Fitzgerald. I think it's an unnecessary distraction from a hurting community. Mayor Price, you mentioned the outside, um, or the chief mentioned the outside agency, uh, the police monitor. Can you speak about the citizen review board? Do you believe that still needs to be in place? We accept it the recommendations of the Race and Cultural Task Force, and one of the charges to the police monitor will be to look at best practices for the CRB, the Citizens Review Board, and to recommend to council how it should be set up and how, what powers they should have and what their authority will be. So when the police monitor is hired, that will be one of the first things he does is begin the process to collect data on that. This panel that we're looking at is separate from the police monitor. The police monitor is a part of our Race and Cultural Task Force. The panel was in place to begin looking at use of force, um, training, and all the processes within the police department. Is there going to be any other organization or agency that is going to be looking into this shooting and what happened to the 
in particular, apart from looking into the city and the policy training and that? I can only reiterate what the chief said, that he has talked with the FBI in case there's a civil rights violation. He's also gone to the Texas Rangers. It's my understanding they owe an answer back, but they were not inclined, Chief, is that what you'd say, to take it at this point. The FBI is still looking at it. They haven't declined or, in, or accepted either way. Brandon. Uh, thank you all very much for coming here today. I uh, hope we've answered a lot of your questions. I will have the uh, chief statement on our media portal within half an hour if anybody would like a copy of that. I have a question. Now, what is the number of the police-involved shootings this year? Um, I, did, I, just have <coughs> I believe nine, sir. But I'm all, we're going to end it here. If you have any other questions, you can email us at, the, uh, at our media address. Okay? Thank you very much.